So this week I've been training from the narrowboat on the canal as part of our summer trip. As you can tell because the sun has gone away and my hoodie has come out. <laughs> done that many trades this week I've been taking it a bit slower trying to have a break I have done a couple of trades and I'm gonna go through those with you in the moment uh, but I've also been experiencing some like electrical problems on the boat so some things we need to fix if I'm gonna carry on traveling and trading but let's get inside the boat and let's break down my weekly recap Everybody. so I'm back in the boat now back moored up and just got the charts loaded up here um, before we get into that I'll just go into my weekly review spreadsheet just so that you can um, catch up with where I'm at with my trades for this week so week four of July and I've only done two trades this week um, it is Thursday when I'm recording this so I haven't taken any trades today I've sort of been watching the charts but I wanted to take it a little bit slow and a little bit steadier this week anyway and also it's the first week of me trying out my new strategy that I created in my last video the trading plan and um, so I'm just trying to be patient this week so anyway one win and one loser and I'm up I'm actually up just over 1% on the account this week, which is really good. So a nice green week to catch up. And the two trades that I did, one was on the US dollar to the Canadian dollar, which was a really nice trade and it could have been a lot nicer and I'll show you why in a moment. And then I did a trade on the Great British Pound US dollar, which I knew when I got into it that it wasn't a good trade. So I'm a bit annoyed about that for myself, but um, it's all learning. So first let's look at the US dollar Canadian dollar which I took on the 20th of July in the morning. Um, so I'll just jump onto the charts for that. And I've got two charts open. I've got the hourly chart on the left hand side and the four hourly on the right hand side which I have been using more as per my pin bar strategy. And all you can see on this out this four hourly one, let's make this a bit bigger. If I just zoom out, you can see that we're in this consolidation wedge and I've drawn on these trend lines here as per the daily chart. And we've basically just been consolidating between these two points. And in the morning of the 20th of July, I saw this really nice pin bar rejection candle of this top trend line and it also rejected the daily moving average at the time as well. Uh, but that that candle was formed 2 a.m. It closed um well, it closed just at 6 a.m. ready to start the next four hourly candle. I think I sat down about 8 o'clock, half 8 to look at this. So I was looking at it in more detail on the hourly chart here. As you can see, these two candles on the four hourly, they sort of represent uh, this section here on the hourly chart. So we've come up here to test this top trend line, we rejected it and closed below. And then for the next four hourly candle, which was this green candle here, we actually tried again to touch that top trend line. And when this this hourly candle closed, so it was an eight o'clock in the morning candle, so it closed at nine. And this was a really nice rejection candle. That was when I got short because I had the confirmation from the four hourly for the previous four hourly candle that rejected. And then I had like a second rejection. So I felt like it was a really good confirmation for the trade. So I got in around about 1.3581. And for this trade, I was risking 25 pips and I was risking 25 to make 50. So I was risking 1% to make two. I set my stop there because I just wanted my stop above the high of the previous four hourly candle and also above the trend line, which is what would be the resistance. Um, so it wasn't too big of a stop. My target I set here mainly because I was keeping that two to one profit loss ratio and also I wanted my target to be inside this trend line range because previously we can see that we've been respecting these levels so I was kind of expecting to get a bounce from this trend line, this bottom trend line like we did previously here in this area um, but I'm actually quite surprised because if I zoom out again on the four hourly you can see here that it actually broke the trend line and it continued down even more. It's broken this um, pivot line that I've drawn in and it's now actually broken through the monthly 20 moving average so it's really made a, a great move down which I hadn't anticipated which is why I hadn't set my target there and because I've been a little bit on holiday this mode this week I've not actually been watching this like I could have done to extend my position so I'm not really annoyed because it's just one of those things and it's still a green trade so that's great 
But, you know, I have to admit that when I kind of extend my target down to where it's actually where the price action is currently at, you can see that I could have clearly gotten over 7% profit on this trade. Um, but, I mean, that brings up the question of where I would have held it, this whole position. I probably wouldn't have done. It would have been better to have taken two half size positions and maybe closed one at my original target and let the other one run. So that's maybe something to consider for future trades. Uh, but as you can see, it's made a really nice move and I've just got a tiny piece of that pie, but you know, that tiny piece is still good. So nice green win on US dollar CAD and that's using my pinball strategy. So that's a good start to this new strategy that I have developed. And the second trade that I took, as you know before, was a losing trade and that was on the pound to the dollar. And I took this trade on Tuesday the 21st and um, took it in the morning and it's, it's not the best strategy. Um, I'll just move across, you can see my notes here, but... I was aiming for this pin, pin bar rejection again. Basically, I was using a combination of the four hourly, hourly and the one hourly chart and also the smaller time frames, which aren't that reliable. So that's where I went wrong as well. Um, but I also knew the pin bar was too small to be a valid pin bar. It wasn't a clear signal, not like I had for the US dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, I'll show you why. So again, just on the four hourly chart here, just zoom out a little bit. You can see that we've been in this consolidation again on the pound to the dollar and recently been in this little kind of channel here. And uh, we broke this channel, this horizontal ray I had here, and we've also got the blue daily trend lines and we were coming up to the monthly moving average. So basically we'd broke this channel and we come up to this daily trend line and what I was looking at here was a mixture of the, the six o'clock four hourly candle and then the 10 o'clock four hourly candle and the six o'clock closed just underneath the trend line. What I'm disappointed about, especially looking back now, because you can usually see quite clearly when you look back at a chart on a new day, that this is not a pin bar candle, I know that. What we've done here is it's quite a bullish candle up. It's closed below the daily trend line, but it is still quite a bullish candle. We've only got a small bit of the upper wick here. Um, so it's not enough to go short on a position, and I know that now looking at it, but at the time, I didn't go just from the four hourly, which is what I should be doing for the strategy. I actually looked more at the hourly and I even looked at the 30 minute and then the 15 minute chart as well. Uh, but for the same time period on the hourly here, the 21st at 10. So we can see just before that we had a slight kind of pin bar candle, but even then the body is still quite, it's too big to be a pin bar candle, but we have got this large upper wick, which is what I was looking at, rejecting this daily trend line. Then we had quite a bullish candle up and then we had this other shorter candle closing again just below the daily trend line. And this is where I went short, but I know now that that's not accurate because we don't have any clear rejection of this trend line. Yes, we've got this long upper wick here and close below it, but the body is still really quite big. And after that, we had this large bullish candle here, which showed that the sellers weren't totally in control. Uh, but regardless to what I can see now at the time, I used this as a signal to go short because I was sort of hoping too much that this daily trend line would act as a resistance, I guess. But again, looking back at the four hourly chart, which I know is what I should be using more as a dominant chart over the one hourly, this is not enough to be getting into a position. But anyway, I got into this at 1.2682. And if I just sort of move across, we can see that it actually came straight up and hit my stop. Um, the thing I was annoyed about is that I knew that these signals were not good enough to quantify getting into this trade and secondly before i actually got into the trade i thought to myself that there was a chance that the price action would probably go to the monthly moving average to test that level and then that would be the better place for an entry if it rejected that and i'm annoyed because i thought that and i just disregarded that thought and got into it so it was probably more emotionally fueled in fact i think that day when i took this trade because I'm kind of been a bit distracted, I was probably rushing myself, which never bodes well for trading. But as we can see, it did come up to this moving average point, And then this is where we did get a rejection of that. And then it's sort of come back down. And now it seems to be bouncing between this horizontal ray and this moving average, uh, which is where it's pretty much not gone anywhere. So it's quite a poor trade. I know that now looking bad, back at it, especially. Um, but just sharing that with you, because it's always good to see the losers as well as the winners, right? But all we can do with the losers is make our notes, learn where we went wrong, which is what I've done here, and hopefully not repeat those mistakes again. <laughs> but I'm glad that I've been able to keep a, a better profit loss ratio so that even though I've had one winner and one loser, I am still up just over 1% on the week. So that's a nice outcome.
so I'm probably not going to take that many trades tomorrow with it being Friday and I am trying to be a little bit slower and steadier because I am trading this new pin bar strategy so I don't want to over trade I just want to you know dip my feet in the water and see how it goes I'm aware that I am currently down so far 17 pounds on the month um, but I'm trying not to focus too much on that it doesn't really matter to me at the moment what I'm making or what I'm losing I'm focusing more on what I'm learning and what I'm practicing and right now I just want to focus on looking for the best quality trades for my strategy and even if that means next week that I don't take any trades I need to try and find peace with that in myself as well and trust that the market will always come around and provide when the strategy is there but I can't force it if it isn't there so I'm going to see what happens next week, see if there's any good trades or I might even just focus a little bit more on studying and researching and I might not take any trades at all, we'll see. But I hope you've all had a great week and I hope you have a fab weekend. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.